two uh, maybe not connected uh, comments or questions. Do you want to see what the uh, main thought of what people thought? Um, in terms of the culture, uh, does the, I, I guess the culture accept that an architect would say to the client, uh, wait a minute, you, uh, what you have here is not beautiful or there's not enough space or do, do architects, I think, I, I think my question is about the question of beauty. Uh, and I have a feeling in the most, most Sudanese, um, whether you live in Sudan or most people are in the Gulf, Gulf countries, the, the system of mortgage doesn't exist. So you really have to save the money and start building, you know, in a, in a, in a, in an almost like a, a survival kind of mode. So I just wonder whether, um, architects feel in that situation, they can still say to the, to the client, this is not beautiful. Okay, I'll jump straight into that. Um, well, well, it's not as easy as that. Um, architects work with a certain set of design standards that they work with, but then they would really need to know their, their client very well. And they can only say, yes, I'll design for you because I will only design things that are beautiful and I can say they're beautiful. And they can say, I cannot design for you. This is what I hope they would do. But this is only sustained and helped by the authority and the municipality. And they're supposed to be supporting the architects. In some countries, this does not happen. So the architects have a hard time, con I mean, convincing the beauty or not. Beauty sometimes not just in how things look at the color or the shape. If I wanted, it happened, if I wanted to make a, a wall of glass, like a glass wall in my house in Sudan because I could afford it, this could be beautiful in Europe, but in Sudan definitely not because unless it's shaded and protected, it's going to be really hot. So the aspect of beauty is multifaceted, but you, that's why it's important for you to choose the right architect to work with, and the architect should choose the right client to work with, and the municipality should support everything. So it's an ecosystem, and I'm sorry I didn't give you a straight answer, but yeah, it's not that easy, Mohammed. it's not. As a, sorry, as a follow-up, a lot of people build their houses in Sudan uh, uh, by, through bypassing the architect. They go straight to, uh, to a contractor in Maine. Not just in Sudan. Oh, I see, okay. And that's, I mean, is that, uh, is that, I don't know, is that legal? <laughs> that is not legal because, for instance, in some countries, what they do, what authorities say, your building, your, your maps or drawings have to be stamped by an architect. So you get the building, you have it done anywhere. You go to the office of the architect and he just stamps it and you get the building done. This is not, in my opinion, this is totally not correct. I want to give you a small, small example. Somebody told me, I'm not sure about this, the BMW, for instance, is a luxury car. The way the door of that car closes is amazing to hear, and that's beauty to your ears. So beauty is not just aesthetics of vision. It's like beauty actually woos your whole senses. So how the door closes and the sound it makes. Somebody told me it takes 400 engineers to design that door, the power of design. Not all architects have this power. They just have certificate. And what I really want to do is to put that power in the hand of the community, the client, and the users when they choose the architects. So it's a market demand and supply thing yeah again i go in the circles not a straight answer but yeah okay i'm gonna it looks like i'm gonna hog this for for a bit i mean the question <laughs> of, put, of putting this in the hands of the community that's a huge statement so how i mean, I mean how, how would that awareness work? knowledge architects should be more accountable responsible for their profession the municipality and authorities should enforce them to go under continuous um cpd or or courses, the whole idea, entrepreneurship perhaps should be added to the curriculum. It's a cycle, um, but it's on the architects. This is why the architects have, when I created it, for architects to peer engage. It's not just for them to peer engage and network and find work, for them to share the knowledge and to support each other and to pass the message on to the community. Um, yeah, it's not an easy thing. We're responsible for this. Agnes, I must apologize for my peers. <laughs> okay, so. So uh, I'm just going to ask Ismail to come in. So Ismail, I will take you off mute so that you can have your comment or question. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, actually, this is an interesting subject, the, uh, the architecture in Sudan. I have lived in Sudan all my life, or most of my life, and I haven't only lived in uh, in the capital in Khartoum, I lived in Adbara, in Managil, and Kosti. So I have been to the north and to somewhat the center of Sudan and uh, uh, 
uh, South Sudan, if you consider Kosti to be the new South. So, uh, the, actually, in Sudan, buildings are, uh, like I put a comment, they are, they are inconsistent with the environment, they are ugly, they don't have a personality, and that seems to be appearing in the country after the 70s, because buildings before the 70s, they are not after the 70s, after the the uh, immigration of Sudanese to the Gulf countries, and they came back with the designs they have already seen in the Gulf countries and tried to replicate them in Sudan. That's why we have a multi-story buildings in Sudan. And, uh, and that also appeared with uh, the, the appearance of Al Amarat in Khartoum, which were, were built, was built for the high rank uh, officials in Sudan. So even uh, a multi-story building in Sudan is not anywhere to be found except in the Nubian uh, uh, towns in the northern Sudan. So Nubians they normally uh, have a multi-story building. And the material, the Sudanese, in the north, in uh, North Sudan, they built with the red bricks and with the clay bricks. But if you see the, uh, the Republican Palace in Sudan is built with clay bricks and wood and, uh, and it's standing for uh, more than 100 years now. So the question, my question is, have you as architects and uh, civil engineers considered what is the next material for a sustainable and what is best to be built in Sudan? Because now, all engineers in the world are looking for the best sustainable and energy efficient uh, buildings. So why, why, why won't you consider clay bricks or whatever? Why, 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 why people are um, still insisting on using concrete structure? And is concrete is really that can, can sustain for longer than any other material? Because I think there is a question about that. You don't see high rise buildings built of concrete. They can survive more than four. 40 or 50 years, uh, but you see a clay brick building like the Republican Palace or the big masjid in Tambaktu in Mali that survived like 700 years now, maybe or 800 years. So it's built of clay. So uh, that's actually my question. And have you considered also the local designs of houses? Because they differ. They differ. If you go up north, you can see Northern Sudan that that the ceiling is very high and you when you go a little bit down to the south or up to the south you will see the uh, cone-shaped roofs like gabati and uh, that would can, can, can survive a rainy season so why don't you as architects put that into your mind why try to copy something that really uh, it doesn't fit our environment in sudan thank you very much Thank you very much, Ismail. Omeima, over to you straight away. I I would ask the same question, Ismail. I would ask the same question. I uh, started off, I haven't um, worked in Sudan a long time, but your comment is spot on. Exactly. Why don't architects consider this? And it's not just architects. Why don't people, the clients, the users consider this? And again, for instance, if I, um, some people would know me. I would love to build my own home in the middle of Khartoum of clay bricks, al jalous, as they say, and that would be the best thing because it is actually suitable with the climate. The skills, the skilled labor is actually available, the skills for it, and it actually lives a long time. This concrete, I too don't like it. It works in in areas like banks and maybe. Um, the, the, the public buildings, yes, it, it could work there, but may, concrete is not a beautiful, in my opinion, it's not a beautiful material. It's very expensive, it cracks, it has a problem. I have worked with a, a, an architect called Abdul Wahid al-Wakil, and he, if you have heard of Hassan Fathi in Egypt, he's his protege, or, or his, um, he's learned from him. And he builds, until recently, the mosques, the domes out of brick, and they don't crack, and they're beautiful, but you are absolutely right. I don't have an answer to that question, but I wish we could do something about it, and I'm totally for it. Isn't it? Isn't it where we are today? The product of the fact that you know it's a, an education system, it's an economic system, it's it, it, it's the status quo. In general, you have to consider the condition of our country, the environment of our country that doesn't allow for, um, I guess, creativity and and creative sciences to evolve 
perhaps. And and the country has been in a bit of a cocoon over the 30 years, so it, it hasn't allowed that exchange. Yani, why do sciences evolve and, and these teachings evolve? Because it's the exchange of information. I feel we, we, we've been stuck in a time lapse and, and nothing has moved forward, evolved. Uh, is this a, a naive way of looking at it? That's a fantastic point, but still, I, I don't really have an answer to that. The only thing I can say is, as my personal opinion, mm. um, is that we, we, it has been hard for people in Sudan for 30 years. Mm. And I haven't been living there, but I've been communicating. I know the, the, the family is going through. I've heard lots of stories. Yeah. But it is a problem. And this is why what I'm trying to say from the get-go to challenge the status quo of things and look at from a different angle and hand the power to the people. Anybody here who wants to go and build a house in Sudan, what is the first thing they would do? Hmm. Buy the plot. They already have a plot and it's waiting there for 10 years for them to get the money to build it. And once they come to build it, they have to go find an architect to have to get the papers done, the stamps done and build. And then they go to the problem with the contractor and this loss and this is, it's a, it's, a, it's a horrendous story. So the home, your dream home becomes more like, I don't want to use this word, like where you're going to die, not where you're going to live. Yeah. And why should homes be that expensive? Why should they cost you an arm and a leg? Yeah. Um, if you look at the programs you see in, in Europe or in America, they have these um, renovations where people just go and renovate their own homes. They, they work with their own hands, they do this. So the educational system, yes, we don't have the skills, we don't have the values, again, if I just keep going back to that, mm -hmm. it is ingrained in the society. And so we have to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all the, all the comments are spot on. I don't have answers, but fantastic. And I'm making notes from here to there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask Yasser to come in. Yasser's got a comment, and then after that, I'll write it, we'll come in. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for this interesting topic. Uh, actually, um, I have some comments, uh, not not just questions. Uh, it, it's difficult to, to say all comments in just this one hour because uh, the topic is very, very important for all of us. As you said, this is uh, we need home uh, because we need it, uh, as a place to live, not to die. Uh, uh, actually, my dream is not is, is, is not is just uh, in home. My dream in a compound. So why we don't have these uh, features in Sudan like compounds? You mentioned you mentioned that some friends like uh, collect together, uh, live together. Uh, actually, I'm one of those. But uh, uh, I got someone connected us, and now we are building flats, not not houses. We share flats in in the region of uh, Al Taif in Khartoum. Uh, it's it's really very very expensive. I believe that. Uh, the amount that I paid for this flat, which is like 140 meters square, uh, can can secure a, a better place, like in a better compound. I live here in Qatar with you, Umayma. Uh, as you know, we have here many, many compounds. Actually, I moved from Doha to Um Salal in just last month, just because I found a, a good compound. Uh, the, com the, uh, the advantages of compound, not like just home, I have anything I would like. I have like games, I have a uh, bowling area, I have uh, gardens areas for kids. It's it's an amazing, as as uh, Mubarak mentioned, that we need social. Uh, it's it's uh, the space is, uh, is very important also for social. So why we don't have this in, in Sudan? I had this plan. I, I hope that I was rich enough to, to build the compound in Sudan uh, because Ferris, it's very profitable. You can provide it uh, with uh, good cost for anyone, and uh, I think it will be a good idea to uh, to build something that uh, reflect our culture, like uh, as Mohammed or uh, who mentioned that uh, we have like uh, I think Mubarak we need we need special things like area for for uh, for men areas for women and these things so we can consider our culture in just one compound. And I think this will be good for all of us and reflect uh, reflect our lives well. Uh, I think uh, we just uh, artists, uh, they need to, to work as a team, not as an individual. Uh, I believe that there are some problems with artists in Sudan. Uh, the main problem, I think, they did not uh, move around the world. Uh, there are some mistakes, 
silly mistakes, small mistakes, but it's uh, it's unbelievable they do when they build. Uh, not not artists, I think civil engineering, <laughs> to be honest with you. But for example, we do not consider those of, uh, of us who have uh, disability problems. If you look in Sudan, all we have is stairs, uh, just the stairs. We don't have that uh, areas for them. So I think uh, as artists, we need to we need to sit together like teams. We need to we need to ask people like those uh, who uh, study psychologists, those who know the cultures, and more importantly, uh, to have customers also with us. And I think we can figure out something cheap, something amazing, and something will make us Hanabnihu uh, exactly. <laughs> That's my comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Umayma. Over to you. Fantastic. I, I love this comment and it, it really exposes the way people are suffering or feel about what, what the environment they experience and navigate. So my, my opinion on compounds is compounds are in Qatar, they are um, everywhere. I live in one, but it's missing some things. It has a gym, it has everything. I do not know my neighbors. I don't engage with them too much. Nobody wants to engage with anybody else. But I wanted to say when you go back to build your home in Sudan, the idea of the of the collective building, I don't want to use the word compound because compound is a gated community. That itself is a, is a topic. What I wanted to say was that to battle the, the issue of security in Sudan, because uh, unfortunately Haramiya is, is, is a big thing and they're becoming more advanced in the methods in which they attack you in your own home. So when you live with people you choose, like people you know, people whose values you, you agree with, you know that if your child walks out of the compound, or into the street or into the neighbor's home, he will not be in foreign land. And, and something happened with, with, with us three um, a while ago. My son, who was about two years old, he found a door open and he walked out of the, of, of the door and he walked out of the compound and he walked into the street and he ran into the big street. Somehow somebody just recognized him and brought him back home. So if I could, what I'm trying to say is security and shared values within your community is, is really important and comfort. Um, um, the, the issue of cost was, a, was, a, was addressed. Again, I think building a flat in Khartoum is fantastic, but I'm not sure Amar apartments in Sudan are the best way to go around it. Because if you build the perfect apartment, the, the system of water supply and sewage and structure and roofing in Sudan is not, does not support high-rise buildings to date. I think it's a foreign idea, but people like it because it gives them security and they can control their space. Again, the issues that are challenging decision making in Sudan are what we have to address. It's like addressing the elephant in the room, trust, security, issue, cost. I don't think homes should be that expensive. I do not think that's, that's how it should be. Um, but yeah, the comments were spot on, very valuable. Thank you. Can I just jump in then uh, to comment to uh, Ismail and, and you, Omeima? Um, I, I know that in, in the UK, for example, we're all cooped up in all these taller buildings because of the space available. In Sudan, we don't have that problem. In fact, everybody here longs for a place where ha that has a big garden, even though we can't use it most of the year. So... Uh, my perspective, maybe, I don't know, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody can, can have a, a design of, you know, can live in a compound or el elsewhere, but I feel it's it maybe not right for the environment as a general rule to, to live in compounds, but it's convenient, especially for young people, young couples, you know, uh, people who are sharing apartments or want to buy in a, in a, in a share, I don't know, you know. It provides convenience, but maybe it's yeah. necessary for us to live in, in high-rise buildings. Yes, I suppose you can say that. Um, it, it's a big issue, um, mm -hmm. but it's, it restricts your freedom, it restricts your emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. um, I know in England uh, people would grow plants even in the windows of the very small apartments, so there's greenery around you, there's, yeah. there's some kind of, uh, and then there's escape, they have um, parks you can go, you can walk. It's walkable. Um, it's a different environment altogether. You can actually get out of your apartment and you still, you can do things with your life. In Sudan, you can't walk out. Mm. You just can't, can't walk out the door and just have a stroll down the street. Mm. So yeah, it's a, it's a big issue. And human nature and human needs, as was mentioned earlier by Mubarak, it all comes in. Architects don't work alone. They can never work alone. Mm. They work with everybody. And this is what I'm trying to, to encourage.
Thank you.